straight away. So yes, indeed, as you have already mentioned, HPV is a problem relevant to the mankind as such, to both genders, uh, just like the problem of oncology diseases and the problem of other diseases which are very prevalent in the population of today. Until very recently, uh, before the pandemics of the coronavirus, we had different prognostic calculations which allowed us to judge about the fact that oncology diseases by 2030 will rate first uh, among the uh, course of death. But later on, we received data that by 2050, these are going to be antibiotic-resistant infections as MDR cases continue growing and spreading widely. At the moment, we have um, the opinion that the infections really uh, have no place in our life, and actually, they do exercise their factor which is significantly pathogenic. So they continue actually being significantly pathogenic for the mankind. If we speak about infection diseases, you can see that their prevalence is very high, and HPV is among them. You can see how many people die from different oncology diseases, and the interrelation between infection and oncology has been discussed for quite a while. Ilya Michnikov, in fact, uh, spoke about oncology being the basic infection disease. Uh, we uh, didn't find, or the, the um, medical community didn't find proof to that very fast, but nonetheless, it was more uh, than 100 years ago that the idea of infection being the uh, basis for many oncology disorders, that it was put forward. Then Raus actually gave us first um, uh, confirmation of the viral uh, theory of uh, malignant tumors. And in fact, uh, he experimented in hens and sarcoma. And then later on, the same experiments were conducted by Shaw, who actually know, is known more uh, as a virologist who actually uh, did with benign tumors in rabbits. And for the first time then, in the beginning of the 20th century, he described papillomas and uh, HPV among them, which also is present in the animal models. And uh, of course, we should be very grateful to our uh, domestic virologist, uh, Lev Zilber, who actually put forward the concept of infectious or viral course of malignant diseases. I'd like to say that this is the concept that was registered first as he was actually arrested by the uncover, um, by KGB at that time. Uh, but later on, uh, this theory actually uh, started to be popular. For the first time, we talked about um, vaccination against uh, Hep B which brings down uh, the um, cervical the, uh, the, uh, the rate of a number of cancerous diseases. As a matter of fact, we know now that um, Hep B, in fact, and uh, Hep C uh, is a good start for uh, liver disease, uh, liver cancer. We should also mention Harald uh, Zulhausen, uh, Nobel uh, Prize winner, uh, who discovered the role of HPV in the cervical cancer. And we started actually concentrating on um, uh, the link between the viral diseases and uh, malignancies. And since then, a lot of people, like obstetricians, for example, uh, devoted their uh, research to this particular pathology. But HPV, generally speaking, is a very uh, heterogeneous and very prevalent group of viruses, which uh, harms the um, epithelium and the mucus layer. I'd like to say that such manifestations as benign uh, malformations, as candylomas, for example, are known very long ago, since very long ago, and uh, it has a uh, and Maria Aragonska, back in the 16th uh, century, actually, had HPV. It is as long as then that we have known this virus. I'd like to say that the viruses can be classified depending on their basic DNA, whether it is double chain or uh, single chain. This, uh, they can be classified by this particular parameter. And um, uh, HPV is among the first two classes by this classification. The majority of these viruses within this family, they are on 
photogenic and at the same time, I suppose that I have said uh, a bit wrongly, I've put it a bit wrongly, they actually uh, bring about uh, tumors, both benign and malignant. This particular family is quite big. And you can see that we can classify several types. These are beta and alpha gamma, and this uh, uh, this is alpha papillomaviruses. You can see that among them, it's uh, over 130 different types of papillomaviruses. You can see there it can be high and uh, low, as well as the middle oncogenic ones. Some are species-specific antigens. They uh, are similar in different viral uh, variants, and they can be fused in some bigger families. I should say that the virus cannot be cultivated in the cell systems and almost uh, doesn't bring about the local inf uh, inflammation as well as viremia. But if we speak about the viral families, which are most prevalent and most frequently uh, discovered in men, you can see that the ones that are included in the vaccine, the 16, uh, 6, and the uh, si similar in terms of the antigens with other subtypes. This is why we have this cross immunity that we talk about while uh, talking about vaccination um, against HPV. On the one hand, it contains the antigen to uh, type 18 or 6, but it has the cross immunity in a number of cases to other types of papillomaviruses. This is related to the similar antigenic structures in type 6 uh, to the ones that are given here in the slide. And the 18th also uh, has the cross immunity or cr cross uh, links with the antigens uh, to the ones that are closer to it. Uh, generally speaking, I'd like to say that it's not relevant only to HPV, but also pneumococcus uh, vaccines also uh, is based upon this similar effect, I mean this cross immunity effect, which is included, uh, we include uh, one serotype of pneumococcus infection into the vaccine and it forms the cross immunity to the other subtypes. This cross immunity is the uh, just issue that has been raised in a number of studies. On the one hand, it's very positive. On the other hand, we don't know whether it is really specific, whether these particular antibodies are a fin uh, to this or that uh, variants of uh, pathogen, and we don't know how long this cross immunity will last. That is why direct immunity is something we should rely upon, which gives, gives it ground to the uh, pneumococcus new vaccines and uh, anti-HPV vaccines as well, because uh, the majority um, developed countries already uh, have, have uh, used actually nine, uh, uh, just nine valent vaccine uh, and um, uh, doesn't use this cross immunity any longer. So coming back to HPV, we already know the genes and we uh, know the functions of these antigens or proteins which are included into the viral structure. Uh, generally speaking, you can see here the uh, genes or the proteins, uh, the so-called early ones, or the non-structured proteins and their functions. They actually um, provide this uh, de-spiralization of the DNA, uh, as well as they impact the uh, human cells after the viral introduction, as well as the uh, transmission of the viral DNA in um, cell uh, deletion. And alongside with the uh, cell, it continues actually um, uh, multiplying within the cell until the cell perishes. And the late um, proteins, L1 and L2, Two. These are the proteins which bind uh, to the cell, and in uh, and uh, just they penetrate inside the cell. Uh, L1 is the basis for the vaccine. So the antigen, similar to the antigen of uh, L1 virus, synthesized in the non-pathogenic vectors, and I mean it's the vaccine is recombinant type, where. We have the most, uh, the safest type of vaccines where the vector produces some sort of antigen similar to the pathogen uh, antigen, and it provides us very pure vaccine. So it doesn't have the antigen uh, of the pathogen inside. So this is how the vaccine is made. The pathogenesis of HPV 
at the moment is very well studied. Uh, uh, as, as an example, you can see cervical cases. This is the introduction into the epithelium basal layer. And further on with our cells, uh, the vir virus continues multiplying. And gradually, it reaches the um, upper layer cells. And then it comes out of the cell that perishes. So this is actually uh, something that uh, allows us to explain the immune response. The, um, there are several phases, uh, the introduction of the virus and then multiplication. So it gets inside um, uh, because of the L1, then a replication starts of the DNA and the virus stays within the cell, becomes part of it. It's very important to say that these early proteins, E7 uh, and E6, they have the function of suppressing the immunity of our cells inside the body system. and um, also, anti-tumor immunity is uh, suppressed as they block the proteins which are responsible for the activation or reactivation of the anti-tumor protein. So these same early proteins um, are also capable of suppressing expression of the tool-like uh, receptors or TLR. You uh, know that uh, actually a recognition of uh, the alliant is a group of receptors, and one of the leading receptors here are the TLR. I'd like to say that also the changed and modified, as well as the damaged cells, they must also be recognized uh, by a particular tool receptors. If this particular system is violated within the membrane, then our immune system cells are not capable of recognizing the damaged cell or the modified cell, which is uh, capable of oncogenesis. So I'd like to say that this also uh, results in very long persistence of the pathogen inside the body system and the formation of the so-called uh, distort cells. And the third phase is the phase when the virus, alongside with the cell, actually reaches final uh, damage of the cell, and the, the virus comes out of the cell and starts infecting uh, the neighboring or adjacent uh, cells. This is a beautiful slide that was once created in order to uh, for us to visualize how it actually happens. Uh, the uh, cell uh, discomates, and um, the virus comes out of it, infecting the next cell, which is adjacent to it. So I'd like to say that it's an epithelia. Uh, epithelial, um, uh, HPV is an epithelial virus as uh, first it doesn't damage the cell, there is no inflammation, early inflammation, no inflammation, no adequate immune response because the immune response uh, is first of all related to the first phase, to the phase of inflammation, damage and activation of the acti antigen presenting cells, T helpers and so on. This is the only way how we can actually um, a response to the introducing infection is the humoral immunity, but we don't have this in this infection. Subsequently, we have very low uh, specific response to this particular virus. And uh, our immune response to this infection is very low in men and in women. In men, it's lower, and it's condition for reinfection, sub-infection, or secondary invasion, which could continue during the whole life uh, of a human being. Just because of the lack of immune response, low humoral response on top of each, it's a, a suppression directed suppression because it is suppressing the function of anti-tumor proteins. And of course, uh, uh, this, uh, such manifestations could be seen connected with the basic changes of uh, human immunity. Menchnikov mentioned that oncology it's about microbe agent virus and uh, their comprehensive action. Uh, they didn't speak about viruses in Menchnikov's time, but 
actually different changes were studied, were researched, changes in people that are developing with the persistency of the infection in the course of tumor development was sure that genicity works. It connected with um, inclination for malignization. It's connected with particular genes in uh, a shell uh, a system could be connected uh, with basic genetic dependent primary lack of uh, uh, and antigen presenting uh, cells, uh, T helpers, natural killers. It's typical of all the virus infections for, for persistent ones, for herpes, for example, or Epstein. Bart virus, all viruses that form persistence its result usually of uh, uh, the connection of the interactions between human organism and the virus. That's why the changes of the basic immunity, uh, they are connected directly with uh, the uh, virus infections and their persistence could be connected with the interferon alpha formation, uh, disbalance, uh, or cytokines could be discussed in the context uh, and losing hormone changes and suppression of inter interleukin synthesis of some of them that could be impacted and affected by uh, both the infection and by the by background. There are factors that promote virus, its persistency, its young age. Actually, I'm a pediatrician and uh, infectionist, and uh, uh, I found out from gynecologists that young girls, why they infected so quickly. It is associated with physiological specificity, zone of uh, epithelium, uh, e very low in, in girls, uh, this transitional epithelium, uh, promiscuity, of course. It was shown all over the world that both for men and women, it's a very important risk factor, and the, the lack of uh, circumcision and it is described it is described in connection with prevention of HIV and other types of infections uh, countries uh, where it's a tradition the incidence in men is lower and in women as well not in all countries that have this tradition but if we speak about young girls I would so I was no, it was told by uh, obstetricians, so it's physiology and young age that uh, contributes into uh, development of the virus in the organism. There are core factors, core risk factors. What promotes uh, uh, this uh, uh, virus, uh, the persistence of it, they are not specific. They could uh, uh, support, so to say, other viruses as well. It's smoking, uh, um, different hormones that could suppress the activity of uh, the cell uh, part sector of the immunity. It's uh, immunosuppression that is being formed under uh, the effect of all kinds of factors. It was primary immunodeficiency, secondary one that connected with diseases, uh, with the uh, uh, hormones uh, or other drugs that suppress our immune system. If we speak about HPV infection, because it's infection, uh, it's uh, uh, we speak about its persistency and then about clinical manifestations, always result of interactions of virus and uh, basic specificity of uh, people, of a person. What is the age uh, of infection? It's easy to prevent infection before it occurs and vaccine uh, uh, pro prophylaxis is protection, protection uh, in uh, the, uh, at the stage when a person is 
healthy. So it was studied. It was studied when, why, and how infect uh, infection happens. Sexual contacts for adults, of course. It's well known that uh, even with a contact without penetration could result in, in uh, development of infection. It's, uh, uh, but there is a vertical a way of transmission. It's very important because it could be manifested uh, later in children. Uh, regretfully, many people who do not have clinical manifestations, uh, they do not know about the disease and they spread uh, this agent infection is being registered all over the world, in all the regions of the world. It's, uh, uh, the levels are different, incidence is different, but it's 11.7% of population of the globe. There are regions with a more high level of uh, the prevalence and with lower one, uh, the age of uh, uh, is very young one uh, when uh, people could be infected, but clinical manifestation could start developing later. You can see that there are schemes that show uh, this difference between the moment when infection penetrates the body and uh, the clinical manifestations. Uh, st interesting studies of the antibodies in young Goals uh, HPV 16 and 18. Uh, then, uh, it was shown that when they are 18, uh, when they are 15, 16, 18, uh, young girls could be detected with a uh, titers, the uh, high titers, uh, and uh, so it means that they had been infected. Uh, there were many studies. Regarding the type of, of the type of sexual behavior in adolescents and teenagers, it were, the data were connected to, with the results of questionnaires that were presented to the parents. Uh, first, uh, when we started speaking about HPV, many parents refused uh, to allow to inject uh, to vaccinate uh, their children, and they were afraid that the uh, uh, vaccination could pre pre uh, provoke uh, infection. The date of the questionnaire among uh, 11 12, 13 years, teenagers showed that sexually active children are among them, that there are many of them. Uh, the data uh, is from the United States, but our Russian data are very similar. Parents in 50% of cases were wrong when uh, estimating, evaluating sexual behavior of their children. Similar questionnaires were used regarding what sites. Uh, uh, children use in the internet. They were asked children and parents. The difference is 70 percent regarding what children told and what parents thought. Another study uh, uh, confirmed early uh, beginning of sexual light, which pr promotes uh, uh, this infection. Uh, the infection the levels of infection is growing. And uh, with age, uh, the chances are going up to get it, and uh, the difference could be eight uh, times if we compare the age. So prevalence is very high. Infection could be met by a young person very early. It was considered then uh, uh, for women, uh, you know, 40% uh, of uh, uh, women would be infected even if they have one partner. Uh, double WHO estimated uh, the uh, prevalence of the virus in population. Women, 12% of them uh, have HPV. A young uh, women in 20%. In men, it's 1 to 80%. I would like to attract your attention. Who has more problems associated with this infection? Men, 
older than 2024, mm, yes, the uh, uh, figures are different, but up to 80 percent. Uh, here we see that uh, same age actually typical uh, regarding the chances to be infected in men and women. Some young men start their sexual life a little bit maybe later, but later in life, uh, I'm talking about sexually active people, it's parallel. We can see parallel chances in men, chances are even higher to, so to say, catch it, this virus. So it's infectious type of pathology, this virus that could be persistent. And uh, in this case, it caused different clinical manifestations. So uh, uh, I actually, it, it's my idea. I mean, this wording, it's infection with a uh, typical uh, uh, of course, it could be uh, manifested uh, by benign, malignant, and so on manifestations. Clinical uh, manifestations are well known. The, uh, it's a nice, beautiful pictures are available that show how both malignant and benign uh, tumors here or um, could, could be and we can uh, see this triangle, which is very uh, ill, which, which illustrates the situation. It's considered that uh, uh, in the near future, uh, the incidence will be going up. Uh, many studies were devoted to uh, the uh, cervix. Uh, uh, malignancies. If we consider uh, and compare the diseases provoked by this virus in men and women, we'll see that the levels, the incidence uh, are similar. Some studies showed that uh, women are targeted uh, more often than men, let's say, and they are suffering more in connection uh, with this virus. And the most threatening disease is uh, cervical cancer. This is uh, 2008-2012 uh, study uh, numbers uh, of oropharyngeal and cervical cancer. That's what I would like to attract your attention to. Figures are identical for men and women. So statistics uh, made uh, researches to become more attentive regarding what pathology is developing in men, to which extent this virus in men is serious disease. So what pathogens depend? Uh, on the uh, just um, what what pathogens bring to these uh, diseases in men and women? Uh, oropharyngeal cancer in men also showed that the reason is 16 type of the virus, which uh, brings about the which is responsible for the disease in women. So depending on the percentage of uh, prevent prevention by vaccination uh, in viral 16. Uh, you can see the results for the oropharyngeal and cervical cancers, um, more to that anal cancer. You can see up to 80 percent. So these two uh, particular type of viruses were for the first time studied as the oncogenic ones. Penile cancer, 60 percent. I suppose the same percentage as oropharyngeal and cervical. All this is definitely studied. and. Eventually, you can see that these figures are very close uh, uh, by the results of different studies. Now, you can see another study from the United States, which also shows that this uh, type 16 or 18, both for men and women, is absolutely identically unfavorable in terms of infection rate and also in terms of the further uh, development of malignancies. If you speak about type 6 and 11, which actually uh, are non-oncogenic type of malformations, or they're responsible for them. You can see that uh, RRP is uh, uh, relapsing uh, 
the spiritually uh, papillomatosis, you can see that the risks for men and women are absolutely similar. So I suppose that as of today, I suppose we should say that it's a completely gen gender, um, gender uh, independent pathology, and both infections uh, can lead to very serious outcomes and serious diseases. These are um, domestic research or studies which, uh, in fact, are very similar to what we have in the world. Now, um, all over the world, uh, there were studies in the uh, um, prevalence of the highly oncogenic types of HPV in cervical cancer. Uh, you can see that types 16 and 18 are most prevalent, and uh, uh, beautiful schemes came uh, to show how persistence happens and how the malignancy uh, is formed. But what is really interesting is that very frequently we hear that in my country, we have completely different types that bring about the disease. Uh, in some other countries, it may be 16, 18, but in my country, it's different. I'd like to show you that the ratio of types 16 and 18 can change according to the region of the world. Uh, there are uh, 16 types prevalent in some countries, and they um, lead to malignancies. But you can see Europe, which we um, are in, you can see similar data all, all over the uh, general, uh, just generally. But uh, if you look at the lethality or mortality figures, then I'd like to say that it was uh, quite high in different countries of the world. And Russia actually is not in a favorable situation anyway, but not uh, first. So non-oncological disorders like um, um, as well as the oncological, oropharyngeal, uh, genital cancers, cervical cancer in women, you can see that in 70, 80 percent of cases, it is related to type 16 and 18, which actually we can prevent with a vaccine. I uh, decided not to include into this presentation the uh, data from uh, Professor Bilayev, uh, director of uh, the Research and Development Institution of Oncology, which shows that both in uh, the Nordic Europe and in Russia or pharyngeal countries, they register uh, more frequently in men than in women, which again uh, tells us about the importance of prevention in both genders. When we decided to assess pharmacoeconomic effects, just like for any other prevention measures, it became clear. Uh, if you look at the uh, duration of 10, 15 years between the infection and the uh, development of malignancy, you can see that the efficacy of this um, and the cost effectiveness of this particular uh, vaccine is quite questionable. That's why we decided to look at the, another manifestation, the genital uh, genital was. Uh, you can see that uh, the mass immunization actually uh, allows us to get rid of this pathology, and actually it can prove it, it can allow us to prove the. Um, cost efficacy of this uh, particular vaccine. So first here we have, first I'd like to say that it's one of the major pathologies and uh, there are other infections. Gynecologists actually, actually are involved. In my country, this all this is underestimated and the pathology is under-registered. And uh, if you look at the number of um, diseases per um, number of population. You can see the figures for Russia if compared to Great Britain and United States. In Great Britain, the epidemiological surveillance is good enough. And uh, what they carried out is a study uh, over the uh, frequency of uh, sexually transmitted infections, which has been, which have been registered for the recent 15 years. There is growth in gonorrhea, in syphilis, in herpes type 2 and also a reduction of anogenital cantilomas, because that was the country that first introduced mass vaccination for girls and boys against HPV. As a matter of fact, uh, children of early age suffer from this pathology very widely. This is, again, the result of active 
strive for the adult life and the infection that they pass on to one another. If we speak about the general cantilomas, in 100% of cases, they can be explained by two other types of viruses, 6 and 11. And uh, I'd like also to say that uh, in relation to them also, we can uh, register certain malignancies. But these two viruses are also responsible for another pathology, which the oncologists do not come across, but the pediatricians do. This is a relapsing respiratory papillomatosis of the throat. In fact, it can happen both in the adolescent period, in the youth, and in adult, uh, in adulthood. In babies and children, this is the vertical transmission of the virus. As a matter of fact, it's well known that uh, it could be different forms of vertical transmission from mother to child, and in 20% of cases, 5% is HPV. It was detected in men and women from infected uh, mothers via the mucose, and you, as you can see, uh, they conducted a study which started to it, it, it showed that it starts to implement from the age of uh, one to six, seven years of age as a respiratory papillomatosis. Epidemiologically speaking, um, we can say that the prevalence in um, women, in women who are infected with uh, virus type six um, and eleven, mainly eleven, the risk of vertical transmission is. Uh, 200 uh, times as high as those women who are not infected with the virus of these types. My colleague is going to talk about the vaccine, and uh, I'd like to say that I uh, should mention that uh, vaccination actually uh, has a number of antibodies which uh, are um, which cross the placental barrier. That means that the woman protects the child uh, against these HPV type uh, types of viruses. At one of the conferences which was devoted to HPV, there was a question raised that most probably this particular respiratory papillomatosis can be uh, got rid of uh, by means of uh, early age vaccination against these types of um, HPV. This is actually growth of papillomas inside the throat, bringing about um, respiratory distress. And uh, uh, in St. Petersburg, one of the pediatricians uh, um, said that actually they must be nonetheless uh, uh, vaccinated because it might get this disease better. Because apart from uh, uh, undergoing uh, continuous surgeries during pregnancy, when there is T cell immunity suppression, this particular <clears throat> this particular papillomas uh, started growing, and sometimes death because of suffocation happened. Uh, so we are going to have HPV and HIV. Uh, we are not going to have this particular uh, talk because um, our colleague uh, got uh, sick. That's why a couple of slides. I will show a couple of slides from that talk. It's clear that the HIV infection is first of all. Uh, suppression of CD4 cells and destruction of CD4 four cells for the HPV. Uh, this is utterly important to have active immunity um, related to T helpers type 1. Uh, more to that, the infection itself actually is a uh, factor that um, uh, brings about uh, uh, predisposition to uh, HIV infection, you can see what may happen in the cell immune deficiency. These are just awful slides, which I suppose are not any better than the photos that oncologists love showing with their oncology diseases. You can see that uh, not very long ago, in 2020, we showed data on HPV, uh, HPV infection among HIV positives, and they also demonstrated the forms and the, pre the prevalence of forms which are typical of HPV, are genital and oropharyngeal. You can see anal uh, cancers in uh, HIV, HPV positive is 80 per 100,000. Perinatal HIV infected adolescents and young adults also is abnormally higher in um, HPV, 40%. Women living with 
HIV positive, oh, excuse me, uh, women living with HIV. There are over 19.6 million globally. And among them, the risk of HPV infection is approximately um, twice as high, six, seven fold higher rate of persistent HPV. And look at the invasive uh, cervical cancer. It's um, 7.3 per 100,000 uh, person years usually, but in the HPV, HIV positives, it's 176. These are two pathologies, in fact, that uh, go uh, shoulder to sh shoulder with one another. And uh, they are synergic, so to say. And uh, they set about the conditions of flourishing and thriving together. So, and the data of meta-analysis also verify the fact that these two viruses, in fact, are very friendly to one another. Uh, apart from that, if we have genital HPV, then the HIV infection risk also is significantly increased. And more to that, you can see the data that proves it. Spread of infection related to HPV and HIV positivity. You can see again men and women. You can see how more frequently uh, they get infected with, if they have one of the infections, or they get infected with the other one. Persistent HPV infections were associated with an increased hazard of HIV seroconversion, and the persistence actually is formed much in much um, bigger number of cases. And now cancer incidents in positive and negative, uh, HIV positive and negative is also different. Now, how the vaccination can influence the situation? If we do vaccinate both healthy and the HIV positives, we can bring down the cancer, um, cancer rates among the infected people, but nonetheless, it will not be as victorious as in the healthy general population. So the conclusion that all these authors come to is that genital infections uh, with HIV, HPV infection are very typical of HIV positive population. And unfortunately, as of today, usual measures of prevention, non-specific ones and the screening can uh, not resolve this issue. So the only method of um, prevention is primary one, so vaccination. All people living with HIV are those who uh, live with higher risk of infection spread. So when it comes to my country, it is not any different from other countries of the world. Uh, this is data from our uh, studies. So sexual debut by the age of 15 um, happens in a great, a great number of um, adolescents. Uh, uh, Professor Umara, who, who is a great expert in gynecology of teenagers, she says that it's not only early debut, but Promiscuity is very typical of our girls, and the level of education impacts and affects uh, their risk behavior, uh, typical for all over the world. Uh, some years ago, I remember uh, that our poet and writer, uh, Mr. Vishnevsky, was uh, discussing uh, social studies, uh, and uh, uh, he actually wrote about the same uh, trend, same tendency. Uh, so this is a s data from Center of uh, HPV Infection, Russian data, the data provided by Russia regarding sexual behavior of our adolescents. 
uh, information about the risks typical of our teenagers and uh, adolescents. Many girls uh, smoke, 22% of women smoke, and this is co factor, co risk factor. And uh, you can see in red here negative aspects in Russian Federation. They say there is a program of routine immunization. It's not true. Uh, it's a prevention. Uh, uh, is available only in some regions, or if a doctor uh, just says that there is a chance to prevent a serious disease, you should go and get uh, uh, immunized uh, book by uh, Lalina about promiscuity typical of young women and about infections and co-infections that were detected in of different people in women uh, together with HPV. Uh, this is the global picture. Uh, we re regretfully differ from many uh, industrialized countries, uh, and uh, uh, mortality is rather high. If we consider the European region and the structure, uh, we are closer to uh, uh, the uh, top uh, uh, of this diagram and uh, the top, the very top reflects uh, um, countries so with a sad picture. Cervical cancer is typical of a young age now, women 15 to 44, and our data that we provide for WHO, uh, the, uh, in between the cancers, uh, cervical cancer ranks second, and uh, mortality is very high. Uh, data from your institute, and uh, just uh, it was shown the pharyngeal cancers are growing even fast, faster. This is about morbidity and the growth in early age. Uh, oh, I, I'm talking about cervical cancer. In comparison with other malignant diseases, um, uh, infection happens very early. Uh, if we speak about incidents of difficult, of different manifest manifestations of HPV, the data are not that threatening, it seems, to. Though our local Russian studies uh, and data from 2013 show very serious figures, uh, 93 per 100,000, uh, it's threatening, 2.5, it's more or less. Uh, oral cavity, 29, and uh, uh, larynx, 29.5. Why am I showing this data? We can see the same picture in Moscow, in uh, St. Petersburg, same high levels, age groups here. I just would like to show you uh, different infections. You have seen 25, 29. Uh, when it's mass immunization, the level of incidence is going down. Here we have infections, controlled infections, standard immunization schedule is developed for them. Uh, hepatitis B, let's take it. And the incidence is uh, comparable. Uh, was comparable before mass immunizations. It could be comparable uh, with HPV incidents. Uh, and uh, and uh, today we have overcome eight, 839 cases for our country last year, just uh, uh, 
and uh, measles, measles is going up because the immunity levels and scope started going down, typical of the globe. And some growth of uh, uh, scooping a uh, cough of uh, so of pertussis and other uh, words, and so uh, there is a serious mechanism of control for such infectious diseases that could be implemented for HPV as well for this infection. If, if well, I mentioned this before. Uh, our country, how typical uh, the same viruses regarding etiology is? Is it similar to other countries? Are they similar? Yeah, we have data here, types of HPV viruses. We have them here that we detect them in people with a normal cytology in women mostly with different uh, levels in those who have uh, uh, different, uh, different grades of uh, lesions uh, and uh, if we speak about our studies in if we speak about structure uh, uh, of uh, HPV infection in men we'll see same and uh, just uh, this is uh, almost my last slide, H HPV infection is serious infection, and we have a chance to prevent it. We have potential here. We have countries where 80 percent of uh, uh, population is vaccinated, is immunized. Uh, one third of the countries give this uh, immunity both to uh, boys and girls. In Scandinavian countries, for example, this vaccine is in uh, the uh, national schedule of immunization. I would like to thank you for your attention and would like to add that European Week of Immunization took place uh, this year. It was mentioned uh, that nurses are a very important source of information there. In our countries, it's a uh, doctor uh, who is such Oh, such a source of information. We could think about oncologist, about uh, family doctor. Of course, we trust uh, oncologist more uh, about the uh, value of their words. So, but we should unite our effort in prevention. This.